What's up, guys? I am super excited to share with you this podcast episode. This one is absolutely amazing. This one is going to be for the person who has been on their social media journey for some time now, and they're looking to level up. I get to interview Courtney Lafosse, who was the old social media manager for Tom Ferry. So she's been able to find out what some of the top real estate brands in the country are doing to find success on social media and personal brand. So I'm really excited for you to check out this episode. Let me know what you think and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Bonos Real Estate Podcast. I'm really excited today because I have Courtney LaFosse. Did I nail that? LaFosse. 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she is a social media marketing strategist. She is an expert in all things social media, and I'm really excited to talk with her today because usually I try to focus in on people who are just starting in their social media journey. And today I want to focus on people who have been doing their social media journey for a little bit, maybe a year, maybe two years, and they're ready to take it to the next level. So this is not going to be for the person who's just getting started. It's going to be the person who has been doing it for a little bit and they want to now take it to that next level. So Courtney, thank you so much for joining me. Um, introduce yourself to everybody. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. I feel like this has been in the works for quite a while. Like, <laughs> thankfully, you've been you're really good in the DMs that you're like very um on it. I'm like so bad with that stuff. Um, so I'm super happy to be here and have a conversation with you. Um, but introducing myself, my name is Courtney Lafosse. Um, I expertise in social media management, strategy, audits, that kind of stuff. And I've been doing it now for almost eight years. Um, I definitely did not go to school for this. I graduated from Cal State Fullerton with a degree in public relations and American studies. Did not think that I would yeah. be into social media, but kind of right out of college, that's what I got into. So I've been doing yeah. it ever since. Right on. So um, I know one of the things that the, the way I first found you actually was um, through Tom Ferry. You worked with Tom Ferry for quite, quite some time. And um, that was that was really cool for me to see because, you know, Tom Ferry, he's one of the bigger uh, brands and and he has one of the biggest reputations in real estate in today's world. And so I saw you on his podcast. I saw him interviewing you and talking with you a couple of times. And I was like, wow, like she's definitely doing a lot of things right. And uh, and so I really would wanted to talk with you. Now, how did you get involved with Tom Ferry when you used to work with him? Yeah, so I I worked with Tom for about four years, and I actually came from a marketing agency. So I worked with predominantly retail and like hospitality clients. Wow. And one of my clients was Irvine Company, which out here in Orange County, I mean, pretty much built all of Irvine. They own pretty much like all of the housing, like right. shopping centers, all of that stuff. And right. so I had, you know, experience doing that. And honestly, I was looking for like a, a next step. I was a social media coordinator. I was looking to be like a strategist or a specialist. And yeah. to be honest, I didn't even know who Tom Ferry was at <laughs> all. Yeah. I didn't really know too much about real estate outside of Irvine Company. Um, and so I applied for the job like on a Friday and they reached out to me on Monday. And by that next Friday, I was already hired and starting my paperwork and like working for them. And yeah. so I kind of came in there thinking I was just going to be doing, I got hired as a specialist. And so essentially like posting and doing kind of like community management and all of that background stuff. And they had hoped to hire a strategist. Well, they never ended up hiring a strategist. And so I just kind of like morphed into both roles and not until like my third year that I was there that did I actually hire like help for me during social media. So I was kind of managing, doing all of the posting, content creation, yeah. um, even the strategies each month and quarter and all of that stuff. So that's how I kind of got into it or introduced to Tom. And the funny thing about that is, like I said, I didn't really know who Tom was. And my first day on the job, they, um, Tom like came into the room and was like, Hey, we're recording a podcast. Like, can you film me? And just like handed me his phone. And I was like, Oh yeah, like, sure. You know, and before at an agency, like you had to get approvals from clients, like, okay, yeah. you had to send it to them, look over. Okay. You can do like post this. He was just like, yeah, like 
you just do whatever you want. I was like, Oh, like, is this okay? He's like, yeah, just post it. Like he just kind of was like, yeah, like you got, like you're here for a reason, you know, I was like, Oh my gosh, like he's that's so trusting. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's amazing. I mean, I think that a lot of the inspiration that people get to actually start on social media with video and content creation, especially in the real estate space, it comes from Tom and people like that. And so Ryan Sirhan, I know that there is a few people in the real estate industry who uh, really push that type of thing. And so uh, that's really cool to hear that you were able to work alongside him. Now, yeah. what I want to get into with you is, um, you know, I've been following you for some time and I, I want to talk about like strategies that people can implement today. So like I said, the person who is just getting started, that's a different conversation because there's different things I feel like psycho in the psychology that go into actually starting with social media because there's a lot of insecurities and fears when you're just yeah. getting started. But that for that person who has decided that they're committing to their brand online, um, first of all, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you're seeing from people who have been doing it for, let's say a year, two years, and, and they're continuing to make some of the same mistakes that maybe they could stop doing today after they hear you? Yeah, I think some of the mistakes that I see that are pretty often are they spread themselves too thin by trying to be on every single platform. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they hear that, okay, you need to be on, you know, Meta and X and Instagram and LinkedIn and YouTube. And so they're so overwhelmed that they just start and create all these profiles and then they can't keep up with the workload of like how often it takes to post on those channels. Right. Um, I feel like you should be focusing on at least two channels that you know that you can give a lot of time and effort into. And then right. once you start to gain that momentum and feel like, okay, you know, I'm ready to branch out into longer form video, like then introduce like YouTube to your strategy, but you need to really hone in on those two channels and feel confident enough to move into the others. Right. But I feel like a lot of the times, you know, you read like social media today or you read, you know, algorithm changes and you feel like you need to keep up. And that's when you lose your consistency is because you are spread too thin trying to keep up. Right. Now is you mentioned consistency and that's something that we hear from everyone about, right? How important is consistency? I know for me that there's, there's always this confusion. You hear about, you hear a bunch of different things from Gary Vaynerchuk says to post like 40 times a day. And then you'll hear from another person that says just post once or twice a week, but be consistent with that. Is it really about like picking how picking the amount of time that you can spend on it per week, per day that is comfortable for you and then staying extremely consistent with that? And then to add on to that question, you know, it's a, consistency is obviously a key. But if you can be consistent and post a lot, is that the best answer? What are your thoughts? I don't think you need to oversaturate it. I feel like when people think consistency, they think that means every single day. But right. as long as you have like built into your strategy, let's say your your consistency is three times a week, then keep up with those three times a week. Like you need right. to define what it is for you. I feel like when you start to create four posts a day or what have you, you start to inundate people too much that they don't care to see your content anymore. And you right. also can't be very strategic about the type of content you're posting if you're just churning out that many you know, that many posts per right. day. Because right. if you think about it, like, why, why would I follow you on Instagram and on Meta if you're posting the exact same copy, graphic, right. everything, you know? So like, if you have the consistency to, let's say three times a week, I'm posting on Meta and four times a week, I'm posting on Instagram, like that's your consistency, then you need to right. run with that. But I think that the outside noise really distracts people to think that, you know, well, I saw Jim Smith doing this, like I need to do that. And that's where you start to get really lost in the sauce because then you're following someone else's journey and not really creating your own. Right. And what you had said is really, really important in my opinion. And that is if somebody's following you on Instagram and on Facebook, why would they continue following on both if the content is the exact same? Yeah. And I think that is really, really critical because uh, to be very transparent with everybody, that's exactly what I do a lot of the times. So a lot of times I'll make, especially since they're linked, right? So mm -hmm. since Facebook and Instagram are linked, it's just, you know, one stone, two birds type situation. And so I think that it's, it's really critical to think about, what does your strategy look like for Instagram, for Facebook, if you want to dive into YouTube, to LinkedIn, to X, to TikTok? Like, 
what is the what is the consumer on those on those sites looking for? Right. And I think that is something I'm really glad that you brought that up because first of all, that like helps me a lot because I've always felt weird about just like posting something on Instagram and then distributing it to all the platforms, which I believe that's better than, than, than doing nothing. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, if we really want to dial in, because again, we're talking to those people who want to like dial in their processes and really level up. Like if we're going to look at TikTok the same as Instagram, then why would they fall? I mean, it's just a, such a good point. And so um, anyways, continue on with that because I want you to keep talking on that point. Yeah, I think and I, right off the bat, people think like, well, you know, then I don't have enough time to create specific content for each. Like, I'm not saying the content needs to be, you know, so totally different. You can right. use tools like chat GPT and stuff like that to like rewrite this to fit the, to fit Meta's algorithm mm -hmm. or like rewrite this to have SEO keywords for Instagram. So like mm -hmm. you have the same type of context, but it's written differently. And so like the algorithms pick up on like, okay, this isn't the identical piece of content that's posted on both. And then maybe for the graphic, like organically, you test out something different. Like let's right. say maybe you're posting a video on Meta and you're posting a video on Instagram use different caption fonts, use like there's different things that you can do to kind of like A-B test organically and see what performs well. Because when you actually look into your metrics, I guarantee you that your audience on every single platform is different. You may have some things that are like pretty similar. Maybe it's like 60% women and 40% men on one and your other one, it's like 40% female and you know it could be different right. that way but you're talking to different people um when you really look into your metrics so you need to adhere to that right that's yeah that's such a good point i think that um what you said about the ab testing and everything that's also really really important and it's really cool i don't know if i'm sure you've heard of this but i believe instagram is rolling out a new feature it's an yeah. ab feature where they're rolling it out to professional accounts and uh creator accounts i think uh those two accounts and you're able to post four different like thumbnails, yep. you're able to post four different captions and then it'll automatically choose for you which one is being responded to the best. Yeah. And then choose that one. I mean, what have you heard about that? Expand on that. Which honestly, they've already done that for paid ads. Like that's been a, you know, for dark stuff, that's already been a thing. But organically to test that out is something that's so, you know, impressive to me that I feel like once you kind of hone in on, oh, okay, maybe you know, it'll show you too. Oh, I've been writing in this type of style and I've been doing this type of graphic. I'm going to try something new. And you see like right. whatever you tried new is working. You kind of have that aha moment of like, wow, I've been stuck in this rut thinking that people right. like this and they don't. Right. Oh, that's so good. Because yeah. a lot of times, especially because so many people talk about consistency. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people will be like so consistent and I like 100% that's me. So like I will be so consistent for months, right? And I'll be posting a lot of the same type of content and not switching it up at all. And then I look back and I'm like, man, it's like my views like didn't really fluctuate much. Like this one did a little bit better, but not crazy. And then the moment I post something that's a little bit different than those, mm -hmm. that's the one that that you know gets more views or more engagement or whatever. And so I feel like what you had said is is be consistent, but also be testing. Correct. On all the different platforms. And one thing I'm going to be doing, which like already your little reminder is so valuable because like usually I post, I distribute the same content across the platforms with the same copy, with the, which is the captions, right? With everything. And it's like, that's such a great reminder to switch that up because first of all, Instagram and TikTok are in like direct competition. So mm -hmm. like you can't even use CapCut for Instagram videos because they're in relation with TikTok and TikTok and CapCut are in bed together. So there's so many things behind the the scenes that go into this that I feel like a lot of us forget. Yeah, but there's some stuff you can do behind the scenes. Like a lot of the times for like Instagram reels, people say like the algorithm will pick up that you're using captions from CapCut. Well, the right. easy solution for that is like, okay, I'm using maybe I have CapCut captions on my reels, but then 
you use the feature when you're about to upload it, use the feature into Instagram and say, add captions from Instagram and then just hide those captions. So in Instagram's algorithm, they're like, oh, wow, they are using our captions. Like there's so many different ways that you can like mess around with it. I think that people get so stuck (laughs) on like, no, no, no. Like this is how it is. Like I heard from so-and-so like it picked up on this, like guarantee you need to test everything and anything. Like I still in Instagram stories, I hide hashtags. You'll never see them, but I hide hashtags just in case people are looking for that stuff. Like mm-hmm. there are just so many different workarounds that you can do, but I feel like people don't take the time to like actually look into what their strategy is. They just, like I said, piggyback off of like what they heard or what people say. It's like you need to test it for yourself because it may not be working for someone else's account, but you do it and it works for your account just fine, you know? Yeah. That's, that's super valuable because that one thing I want to touch on because you had mentioned it and everybody has this debate all the time is hashtags. Mm -hmm. So do hashtags matter today or do they no longer matter? To be honest, I, I look at them as like, how would I be searching for content on Facebook or or meta? I'm not going to search for content using hashtags. So why are you putting hashtags in the caption? Like no one, if you're searching for something, you're literally typing in what it is on Meta. For Instagram, I do look at hashtags still. Like if I'm in a specific state or I'm looking for restaurants or whatever, I do look at hashtags and I see like, oh, okay, I like this restaurant. Oh, I like this. You know, I look at that kind of stuff. So like the hashtags can't be the same exact ones. I think that that's where people get stuck as well as they have yeah. these like blocks already pre-built out yeah. and they're just like copy and pasting these blocks. Like you need to actually have the hashtag specific to what the content is about. Like if I'm posting something about like social media management, then I would put like, so I put a hashtag. I always put my name because if someone is searching for my name, any which way I want them to be able to find me hashtag or not. So I always hashtag my name. I always hashtag my company and then anything that goes with the post. Like if it is social media management, then social media management, social media content creation, like things that fall in line with it. Once you start picking like the bizarre ones like explore or like orange county like there's so many ones that are going to fall under orange county you know you just need to be i guess very like aware of what you are using for hashtags yeah and i and that's another one that i've heard so many different things about some people say that they're dead some people say that they are still alive but i think your point of of paying very close attention to what hashtags you use so being intentional about Mm -hmm. the hashtags that you use because I agree with you. Like a lot of times I will search for, uh, you know, hashtag best sushi in, you know, Toronto or whatever. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's super valuable. Um, now another thing that I wanted to talk about was what are you seeing with SEO on, let's say TikTok and on Instagram. And then we'll talk about YouTube separately. Cause that's a different monster, but for TikTok and Instagram, Are you seeing that SEO is being more, is it more relevant now on those platforms? I think it's always been relevant because you have to think all of these platforms are used for searchability. Yeah, of course, YouTube's is going to be a lot different because it is tied to Google, but they are still searchable platforms and that's where people consume content. So I feel like you need to have those specific, you know, keywords in there. But again, your content needs to be based off of like, what is your niche? Because once you start to niche out and create things like social media, if for example, like if I were to just create social media content, like that's such a huge blanket of content. Like I'm very specific about like what type of social media content I make. Like the content that I post on my page is talking about like management or like hiring or content creation, like things that are, that fall under social media. For example, real estate agents, like they just post everything and anything about real estate. Like you should be really specific about like, well, who do you sell homes to? Do you sell homes to predominantly veterans? Like then your niche should be veterans. Like your content should be built around that. Like who do you predominantly do business with? And maybe you are this like local expert, but I feel like that word gets thrown around so much. They feel like because they live in a specific place, like they're the expert, like I'm the expert. I live here. Like what's a different way that you can be that expert in your town? Like, are you the specific person for like go to barbecue spots? Like, are you the specific person for community events? Like you need to niche down because once you start to become so broad, like why would I go to your page when I can just go to every other person in that specific market that is this expert to look for content? 
you know? Yeah. That is super, super valuable. It's that concept of instead of throwing a wide net and just mm-hmm. and just picking up the trash at the surface of the water, you know, go spear fishing instead, where you are focused. You have like you have one tool in your hand and you are focused on that marlin in the sea and you are going right at it. You're so laser focused on that particular target that everything else doesn't matter. And um, I love that. I love that example of, of the fishing. So, you know, instead of casting out a wide net, yeah. right. You go spear fishing. And because it's so true and I feel like very few people actually do that. I feel like mm-hmm. most people are like, especially in real estate, most people are like, well, everybody's a client. And Correct. even though that may be true, it may not be the most effective way to market online. Right. Because yeah, everybody's a client. If you go into a grocery store, I think it's the greatest thing ever when I see a real estate agent just trying to talk to as many people as they can, because that's the name of the game. Everybody's foundation of, of their business is the same. And that's other human beings, Correct. right? Our, our, our business dies if human beings die. Right. So that is, that is the main foundation of everything. Now on social though, it's different, right? Because there's so many avenues that you can go. Um, now that being said, do you think that Let's say, let's, like you brought up veterans. So, if an agent really enjoys working with veterans, um, should that be what their content is and is only, or should they share other things as part of their content as well? I feel like that's built into what your strategy is. Like, you need to have these four different or three different content pillars that you are building content around. I feel like that kind of leads back to that question you asked early on of like mistakes I see. And I think a lot of mistakes are under like not knowing what your content pillars are and who you're creating that content for. Like, for example, like let's say one of your content pillars is like veterans, then you know for a fact, like, okay, once or twice a week, I'm doing posts that fall under this content pillar of veterans. And then another content Mm -hmm. pillar is like thought leadership. And that's me talking about like articles or blogs or things that I found like in the local, like, let's see, OC area. Like you need to have those pillars built out because then they organize your content and who you're talking to when you just are following kind of what everyone else is doing. That's where you start to get really confused and like, who am I talking to? So to your point, I feel like Veterans would be one of my pillars and I would build content under that per week that would talk to them, either a series, maybe it's their stories, what have you, but you want someone to be able to go to your page and be like, oh, they work with veterans. And then they're like, okay, so I do want to work with them. Cause I feel like a lot of times agents are like, no, like I'm the veteran person and you go on their page or like you literally posted two things about like, how would I know that you're the veteran person, you know, or another one too is like investing. A lot of them are like, well, I have a lot of rental properties myself and I do investing. I'm like, then why aren't you creating content about like how to become an investor, how to get loans? Like, like it's once you really think about it, it's like the light bulb clicks of like, Oh yeah. yeah, Now I have endless amounts of content to talk about. Like, Right. right. Well, and I, and it's, I feel like it's important because when somebody does come to your page, especially like real estate, let's just keep it on real estate. When somebody comes to a real estate agent's page, like what do they see? And I feel like what they see is so it's so important. That's your first impression. And do they see that you're posting about um, first time home buyers and also veterans? Like because that's a that's very like different. And I feel like focusing down and niching down on that particular client, just like spearfishing. Like that could be a game changer for people. And mm-hmm. I feel like it's hard though for people to understand that because they they feel like they'll miss out on other opportunity. Correct. And what I always say is like, always accept the the other opportunities, right? Like if somebody knows that you're a real estate agent, you work with veterans, but they're a first time home buyer, like of course work with them. But on your content with social media, like you are the this expert, Right, you're the first time home buyer expert, or you're the veteran expert, or you're a listing agent expert. Like, be the expert in that field. And um, I don't see that many agents doing that. I feel like yeah. it's just it's the it's the casting the wide net strategy for most of the time, which is so valuable to anybody listening to this because you could be that that actual expert in your market right now. Like, you could start that journey right now. Correct. And so, and you- um, 
Yeah. I was, and to add on to that, I was going to say, and you don't know other people and their family or friends that could fall under that. Like I have a friend, Marie, I, yeah. she sells out here in the Inland Empire and she yeah. is heavily focused on teachers. She used to be a teacher and now she's an agent and she focuses on so teachers. Many. So like for sure, it's like, oh, my mom was a teacher. Like she probably, you know, or my grandparents were a teacher or my friend's a teacher. Like, so yeah. I'm going to recommend her because she, you know, values the community and education and this, like you just, you really never know. But I feel like you get so in your head of like, well, you know, not everyone's a veteran, not every, it's like, yeah, but people yes. are, you know, veteran adjacent, you know, so that you <laughs> yeah. could, you, you could fall into that. Maybe that, yeah. maybe the person, their husband, you know, was like their family was in the military and they moved a lot. And like, there's just so many different things that you can yes. do, but you need to find out what you're, what, who, and like who, who you're really truly willing to help. Yes. So you were talking about pillars. Tom Ferry talks about buckets. Like everybody has their term for it, but it's it's just topics of content that you post. Do you think that three is kind of that sweet number? Correct. Well, well, I think it depends. It's funny because when I went to Tom Ferry, like, or when I started there, he didn't have any of that stuff, and I oh, okay. called them pillars, and he called them buckets. <laughs> um, but I was like, no, they're content pillars. But like, he didn't have any of that stuff established at all. Like, he didn't have a strategy in place. He had absolute, like, he was just free posting, like, whatever and whenever. And yeah. so it's such a good talking point as well with like whoever strategy or content you're doing, because if they start to you know, free ball and want to post and do whatever. Like I would always bring it back to like, okay, Tom, well, like, you know, one of our pillars is mindset. This doesn't really fall under mindset. Do you want me to get rid of a pillar or do you want me to add something on? And he's like, oh no, 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 no. Like I don't want to get rid of that one. So it was like, okay, then where are we going to fit in that piece of content that you want? So I, I always stick with four. You could do three depending on like the type of content that you create, but like the very generic ones they have like online, if you were to read like pillars or buckets or whatever, it's like entertainment, like educational, informational, and like aspirational. Those are like, oh, okay, everything you could have things under. But I think it all depends on specific, like specifically my clients. Like I always ask like, who do you want to target? And like, what type of content do you want to make? And then that's where I start to build like the pillars. Like for example, I know for an attorney, I did like, thought leadership was one of his pillars. I also did inner circle, which that was like, he did a lot of community events and things like with his like family and what have you. So like we did a lot of content under that. And also inner circle was like him talking and doing podcasts and things that were kind of like in his like industry. We also did like a showcase pillar for him. And that was him showcasing like testimonials, reviews. Like, so I think you have to really define what type of content and then you build out what those pillars are and then define find what type of content falls within each of them. So when you are creating like a weekly calendar, it would be like Monday, maybe this week, Monday is going to be showcase. Tuesday is going to be thought leadership. Wednesday, I'm going to do another thought leadership. Thursday, I'm going to do another showcase. And, you know, Friday, I'm doing an entertainment post or what have you. So then when you build out a week, you're like, okay, I've done a lot of showcase or I've done a lot of this. And you could see like this month we did 15 showcase. They didn't perform so well. Maybe we should do five. Like you really need to test everything. Once you start to throw things at the wall, like again, yeah. you just become so overwhelmed. Right. Well, and people are not, people don't fully understand exactly how you can help them. And I feel like, so here's one thing that um, I'm curious about. I, one thing that I I believe in is that people want to connect with other humans, right? And how do you, and most of the time, especially in real estate, um, the real estate, their target audience is not other real estate agents, right? Mm-hmm. It's consumers, just average Joe and Mary on the street, and Joe and Mary just they don't really care about real estate. They they care about real estate when they are in a real estate transaction. So if they're buying or selling or investing or whatever, they care about it then, but they don't really care about it like real estate professionals do. Um and so I feel like one of the things is and this may this may or may not fall under the pillars. It may be a separate thing, but could the pillars look like veterans? I make content around veterans. I make content around my inner circle because I like that. And then I make content around me as a human being. So I make content around me and my wife and son and my dogs and our travels. And that's per- that's a, that's the personal pillar, right? So you have the personal pillar, you have the inner circle pillar, and then you have the veterans pillar. 
So could, could one of the pillars just be 100% just a personal pillar where you just show people your, your personal side? If you wanted it to be, I think a lot of times though, there's other things that fall under that. Like, for example, I had one client who we did his, one of his pillars was like brand value. And so Mm -hmm. that fell under anything he talked about that was like personal wins that he had behind the scenes stuff, like things that were adding value to his brand as a person. So you could have, you know, family or whatever as one of the pillars, or it could be like a subset within like something bigger, like showcase or what have you. But, um, another touching on the point of like real estate agents and following what have you, you also have to realize too, like the algorithm picks up on like who and what you are based off of what you follow and engage with. So I don't think you should be following a, all these real estate agents because then your algorithm's picking up on like, okay, this is just solely real right. estate. Like right. it, you need to then look into like, you should be following maybe like other community pages, like your specific community page or restaurants in your community, like something to where the algorithm is like, okay, you're engaging with restaurant posts and you're engaging with community events that happened at our city hall. Like, okay, this is like an encompassing account. When you follow just all of these real estate agents, it's like for, you know, for what? Because you want to be following someone like essentially like who your target audience is as well, because you want to be engaging with them, commenting on posts. But when Instagram picks up like, wow, they're only commenting on real estate stuff. They don't think that you're a real estate agent. They just think that you're interested in real estate. That's a good point. Now, I I feel like if you are going to follow real estate agents, it should be an intentional follow. So, Correct. Oh, okay. I've made a relationship with Chris Benjamin out in LA, right? And I really enjoy Chris and we get along. I love Chris. I know. Chris is- <laughs> I so, love him was, so much. It was really yeah. funny because I was talking to him yesterday um, just over DMs and I was telling him, he, I think even to this day, the podcast that I did with him probably is one of the most memorable podcasts that I've done because Mm -hmm. like, it just got really emotional. Like no one, like no one cried or anything, but like, it it just was a very deep conversation because he was talking about, um, the Mount Everest summit that he did and like the journey that, that, you know, he went on and it was before he had his, his boy. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, a really, really deep conversation. So I always reference Chris over things just because like that, the, the podcast that we did was really, really amazing. Anyways. So I know Chris Benjamin out in LA and um, I'm in Arizona and I'm an agent in Arizona and I connect with Chris. I feel like developing that relationship would be good just for the referral business, right? Correct. So now Chris, now Chris and I can be referral partners, but just like following every single real estate agent that comes up in California. Like, I just, I agree with you. I think that there's a point where that becomes, um, becomes like exactly what you're saying, right? Instagram is going to be like, Oh, this person really enjoys real estate. And so we're just going to keep showing them that. And, and we're going to put their content in front of other real estate agents. And that's Correct. not what you- that's Correct. And well, and the thing is, is like, I follow a lot of real estate agents because a lot of real estate agents are my target audience for clients. So like, that's why I follow real estate agents, you know, I'm yeah. not. So I follow like, I've had clients all over the span. I've had real estate clients. I've had people yeah. like attorneys. I've had, yeah. so I follow those specific types of, you know, industries based off knowing like, okay, I know that they're going to want to see like social media content creation content and all of that. So that's why I follow them, you know, but it's like why I get it when you go to these conferences, like the first thing people are like, well, follow my socials and follow (laughs) this. It's like, yeah. So then you just see your whole entire feed is just like all of these other agents doing video or just sold or what have you. And it's like, And then that's the type of content you're engaging with. Like maybe, maybe go into like, maybe like my community, like RSM, I know for sure they have an Instagram account. Like I would go into like who they're following and I'd follow like some of the people in there and then see like if they followed me back, because then it could be like, oh, like I, like a real estate agent just followed me and you look at their page. Oh, they sell real estate in Orange County. Like I'll follow them back. You know, yes. like you need to be very strategic about that kind yes. of stuff. Um, yes. Even if it's like specific apps or things that you like, like I always look into the, who they're following or um, yeah. who their followers are. And I'm like, oh, okay, like this is, I'm going to start to follow some of these accounts and see if they yeah. follow me back. If they do, okay. They're also interested in my content. Like right. it starts to feed the algorithm in a way that it's like, okay, they're into all these different industries and it's not just like predominantly real estate. 
Right. Yeah. So that is super important. I feel like the thing that I'm taking away from this um, the most is being much more intentional about everything. So Mm -hmm. like what you're commenting on, who you're following, who you're allowing to follow you, which is whatever, but who you're following and the things that you're engaging with, like being extremely intentional about those things um, is something that I'm taking away. So, and that's honestly something that even for somebody listening to this, that is just getting started in their social media journey. Like you have the advantage because I've been doing this not long, but long enough to where I've been making the mistakes. So for you who is just getting started, like you can avoid all those mistakes by being extremely intentional right from the beginning. Yeah. And so, um, and I, I feel like, um, do you know, uh, Arjun Dingra? Yeah. Okay. So Arjun, Arjun has been on the podcast a couple of times. And the, the first time he was on was right after he deleted his account that had over a hundred thousand followers and he started over completely. Now he's up to like 40,000 already or something. But I, I wanted to talk to him about like, why did you do that? And it was a lot of the same stuff. Like when he first started, he made a lot of mistakes and that kind of costed him later on. And then he Mm -hmm. started talking about like homeless stuff and Instagram actually ended up like kind of like suppressing some of his, his content and then banned his account. And so he was just like, you know what, I'm going to start over. Yeah. And so, um, but that is a good, that's a good example though of somebody who like had to learn the hard way. Like a lot of us, a lot of us do. And so for somebody who's just getting started or for somebody who has been doing it for a year, two years, three years, like be extremely intentional about what you do on social. Like it is part of your business, or at least that's the way you should be thinking about it. Like it's not a lot of times people think of social media as like a place where kids go to dance or like do whatever. And it's like, this is a real lead generating like resource. And so take it super seriously. Correct. And you think about too, when you start brand new profiles, what are the first questions that it's asking you? It's asking you like, what are your interests? It's like arts, yeah. entertainment, music. Oh, you're interested in music. Here are a list of people th- in music right. that you should follow. Like it's yes. basically feeding into, into you of like what you should be doing on the platform. But once people are on it, they forget that. Like it, TikTok, all of them, all, they're just like that. So it's like, uh, if I'm into, maybe I need like, more motivational content, then I'm going to start following like Mel Robbins and people like that. Oh, Mel Robbins did a podcast with this person. I like that type of content. I'm going to follow them too. Like I understand the like following friends and you feel bad when someone follows you and you don't follow them back. It's like, it's like, it's social media. Like who really cares? You know, if they're going to unfollow you because you don't follow them back, then maybe your content wasn't that valuable. I don't know. You know, but it's like, you can't take it. (laughs) You can't take it personal. Um, because again, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see all of these, the same type of content or, you know, for a fact, I'm sure you could think of at the top of your head, like specific people that you follow that are mimicking other accounts and have the same type of content going out, but you're still following both. It's like, Right. They're literally regurgitating someone else's account and brand that they're just like right. duplicating. So like yes. why would I follow both? Right. And it gets it gets challenging too, like once you get into communities of people. So since I've started the podcast, I've gotten into like just just the real estate like influencer community of like Chris Benjamin, who has really taken off with social and Ed Stulak and, um, you know, who else? Like Matt Leonetti was on the podcast. Like a lot of these people who have become like real estate influencers. And so you get into this world now of like, there's a bunch of other people that are like that and they're coming into your world and a lot of their content is the same, but especially like if you look at Matt Leonetti's content, for example. Love that too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He like his content is so unique in my opinion. Like, I don't know another person who does content like him. Like it is so just Matt, like he Mm -hmm. does his thing. He sits in the car and tells like super funny stories. And like, he's, he's a really funny guy. Like I am not funny like that. I can't sit and, and tell a story and like make somebody laugh on the other end. And like, I'm very self-aware about that, but for him, like he understands exactly like what the reason people follow him and it's for humor and humor is undefeated, right? Like comedy and making people laugh, like that is an undefeated way to go if you're good at it. If you're not mm-hmm. good at it, then it's just going to be an embarrassing failure, you know? And so, um, but those are people that are, have really kind of stood out in, in the real estate space. But I feel like sometimes they actually hurt 
the person who's trying to get going with social media because they, the person who's just trying to get going or the person who's trying to like level up feels like they need to be doing what Matt is doing and what Chris is doing and what Ed is doing. These people who are, who have been doing social media for a while now and they understand their audience when it's like, who cares about Matt Leonetti's audience care about your audience. Correct. And, it's going to be, it's going to be completely different too. And you have to think right. through, like they didn't start out, like if we're going to talk about Chris, for example, like Chris didn't start right. out doing content like bit, like he wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to do a bunch of bits, like starting right. out. Like he learned right. over time, like, oh, okay, this is my niche. This is my personality right. and I want to show it. And it right. formed into that. But right off the bat, someone seeing that and being like, I want to do that too. It's like, Right. Why do you want to be another Chris? I understand taking right. inspiration from it, but like you need to be your yourself and like what you're right. interested in. Because then again, why would I follow two Chris's? They're in right. my mind, I'm like, I already follow one Chris. I don't need to follow right. all of these real estate agents who are doing bits. Like right. I already have someone who does that. Like already right. marked the box with somebody. So I don't need <laughs> to follow five of them doing bits. Right. right. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. So we we understand that everybody needs to write down like three pillars, right? Three pillars of content that they are going to be consistent with. And they're going to choose a certain number of days during the week that they can be consistent. That doesn't have to be every single day. That doesn't have to be multiple times a day. Pick what you can do in a week and then be extremely consistent with that for at least like six months to a year. I, I enjoy looking at the data of my content over year over year. So mm-hmm. like I will look at my content for a year and then look back and be like, number one, like, I'm really happy because things are improving. Like it just looks better. The mm-hmm. sound is getting better, like the image. So I'm getting better. I'm learning, which I enjoy doing. And then what is now, what is performing? Like what type of content? Is it content yeah. of me sitting in my office with my camera and me talking to it? Is it, is it like my adventures with my family? Like what's, what's really hitting home with my audience? Because again, like my audience is my audience. Like it's not going to be Chris's audience or Matt's audience. It's my audience. What does my audience want? Mm -hmm. And I should double down on that. So we have the, we have the, we're going to pick the content pillars. We're going to pick our consistency. Now, as far as the content, what are your greatest tips for somebody? Like if somebody's just like, do I shoot with my iPhone? Should I get a camera? Like, what is the best way for me to do this? um, If I want to start to level up? I think there's different ways, but one of them is like, I would try to touch on like every piece of content that if we're talking about Instagram, like try out static posts, try out carousels, try out reels under 10 seconds, try out reels over 30 seconds, like test things out. Um, If you're not comfortable on camera, try just B-roll and maybe a voiceover and do a couple of those or try maybe it is B-roll and just text on the screen. Try a couple of those, like kind of see where you feel most comfortable. Like I had someone reach out to me who she was just doing like static post. She didn't really know what to post, but she wanted to get into video, but she was afraid of being on camera with video. And I told her, I was like, honestly, right now is the time for you to just test out how comfortable you feel on camera. Like start with maybe recording something that's five seconds of you talking and then work your way up, you know, or talk about a specific topic for 30 seconds and then work your way up and just shoot it on your phone. Like you don't, it honestly, I've noticed too, like even when I worked with Tom, a lot of the times the organic content we shot on his iPhone performed so much better better than this like well-produced content. I think that people start to like really get into your head of like, no, the algorithm likes when it's shot this, that, and the other, and it knows when this, that it's like, no, it's the type of content that you're saying and speaking to that's what it's picking up on. So it doesn't matter if you're shooting from an iPhone or Android, whatever you have, like, And going back to that person who reached out to me, she just started posting a video a day. And sure enough, like she's feeling now that I look at them, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's been doing it for almost 30 days. She feels so I could tell she's so much more comfortable on video. And I've actually started to see like other agents like copying her topics of videos. And I'm like, yeah, like, see, she had value and she just didn't know it yet, you know, but now she feels so comfortable going on stories and talking and what have you, but you need to just kind of fill out and test like, okay, I can, I have maybe three hours a week. I feel most comfortable right now making, you know, 10 static graphics. I found inspiration through Canva. There's a template for me. I'm going to use that. And then, oh, I've I've saved some people who did like B-roll with text. Like I'm going to try that out. But really 
but again, those pieces of content need to fall under those pillars and then keep track of like how often you tested it for. Maybe it is a 30, 60, 90 day turnover, you know, but really stick with a few of them to see what picks up and look into on your posts like the metric that I really like looking at is saves. Like how many people actually saved this post? Maybe they didn't comment on it. Maybe they didn't like it, but they saved it. So I know like, are they shy to like it or comment it or what have you, but they saved it to go back to it later. And I see on some of my posts, I have like, maybe I have 20 likes on a static post, but I have 150 saves. I'm like, Mm. okay, so someone saw some sort of value in this or someone's going to rip off and duplicate it later, you know? like (laughs) Right. Either like, way. Yeah. 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 Like the two that I try to look at a lot are saves for sure. Mm-hmm. And then shares as well. So like, yeah, you have somebody sharing, you have somebody saving it, which is awesome. And then like somebody sharing that, um, is super valuable because did they share it to their story to show their audience? Did they mm-hmm. share it to like, so for a real estate agent, I feel like that's super, super valuable because most likely I would like to think that if a real estate agent posts a reel about veterans and getting in them into a home, I would like to know that the person who shared that is sharing that with somebody who could potentially use that information. So mm-hmm. that's the way I look at it. And so shares and saves, 100%, I feel like are the most valuable metrics at this point. Oh, totally. And uh, I feel like a lot of people really are so stuck still in that vanity of the metrics of like followers and likes. And those are things that can be bought. Like you have to understand that. Like you can't buy saves, you can't buy shares, but you can buy comments, you can buy likes, you can buy followers. Like, so don't get so hung up on that stuff because I guarantee you, I have what some of my posts, like I have like, 6,000 followers. I -hmm. maybe on some of my posts get 15 likes or so, but I look at other people that I follow that have 30,000 followers and they're getting 15, 20 likes too. I'm like, so like, you know, you can't get so hung up on that number. Um, Even some of the times, I mean, you go into someone's followers and you could see that they're all spam accounts and people are like, no, 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 they're not. You know, I'm like, yeah, they (laughs) are. (laughs) Yeah. It's It's okay. If that's, if that's something that, you know, you are, you know, insecure about that and you feel like you need to have like 10k plus in order to feel valued on social then like so be it but honestly like those are things you should not look at those those metrics that can be bought yeah that's a really good way to put it i've never heard it put that way which is the vanity metrics which is everybody's heard of that but looking at the the metrics that can't be bought that is really valuable. So the share, and that's pretty much only shares and saves. Mm-hmm. Are you getting people to, is your, va- is your content so valuable that people are saving it to look at it later or to show to somebody later, mm-hmm. right? Like, cause a lot of times like I'll save content and then I'll like show somebody. Like I, I, yeah. I say, I save Gary V's content a lot because he has like a lot of really good points and, um, just about content and about like, just not caring about what other people think, like you just pushing you. And I really enjoy that because so many times people get like stuck on like, well, what is so-and-so going to think of this? Like, who cares? Like, Mm -hmm. just go for it. And so I'll share, I'll I'll save some of that. And then I'll share, I share stuff all the time. Like, Hey, check this out or whatever. And that can't be bought, which is huge. So I'm so glad that you said that because likes, comments, followers can all be bought. So Mm -hmm. if you, if you go the inorganic way, inorganic, unorganic, if you go that route with it, right? It's just not going to help you at all. But if you make content that people want to save and want to share and that, you know, us talking about that makes it sound really easy. Like just make content that's easy to save and share. Like it's not that easy. You have to like really practice it and be intentional about the words that you're saying, the content that you're making and who you're making it for. Like that's the biggest thing. Like if you're going to make just general real estate content, most of the most of the time people are not going to like see that valuable to save it or share it but if you make it about like if you make $100,000 and you're a veteran and you want to assume this loan like if you get really specific with it you may get you may get 500 views and two people may see that valuable and for me that's 100% worth it instead of getting 10,000 views that you bought and having zero people get uh, value from it 
Agreed. And you think about the platforms that are like crushing it right now, like TikTok, think about yeah. how their algorithm works and how you save that type of content. Like yeah. you like it, like you don't just give out likes freely on TikTok, right? Because you know oh. that they're going to be saved into your, your like folder. So you're liking yeah. stuff that like you want to go back into and look like maybe yeah. it is like how to get a VA loan. Like, and then you're going to show someone of like, oh, did you see this? Like, this is how you get a VA loan or a lot of like right now, because it is like the holidays, people are looking at like, Christmas hacks or like how to how to yeah. truly set up a Christmas tree. Like I'm saving that kind of stuff because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is stuff I want to go back and look at. And Definitely. I use like for Instagram, I use the save filter or folder for a lot of my content too. Like I'll go back and look at stuff and I see like, okay, this post performed really well. I'm right. going to save it. So when I need to think about content again, maybe in six months, I'm going to repurpose right. this exact same piece of right. content with different yeah. text, with different color, different right. graphics, different caption. But I'm going to yeah. test it out again to see if it also performs well in six months. Because right. in six months, I may have a completely different you know, new followers and an audience that right. has not seen that post yeah. from six months ago. So yeah. I like to keep like, thankfully in Instagram, you can make different folders. So I keep like a specific save folder that's like top content yeah. and yeah. I put all of my content that's like performing well or like right. for example when I worked for Tom I kept a lot of folders based off of events so like I would right. have like a UGC event I'd have a UGC folder for summit I've had I'd yeah. have one a UGC folder for elite retreat so like when people right. were reposting stuff from that specific event I was saving it into that folder so when we looked back for marketing materials for like UGC content I didn't have to yeah. like try to look so hard to find stuff, I had already pre-saved right. everything in there. Yeah. That's a super great point as well. Many people may not even know about the folders that you can save on Instagram, but like for there for a while, I was, I was making folders for everything. Like here's fold, here's a folder for uh, workouts. So if like mm -hmm. I saw a good workout, like I'd add it in there so I could add that to my routine. I would add a folder for um, like recipes. Like if I wanted to make like a chicken pasta or something Smart. like that. You know, like there's that yeah. it's like almost like Pinterest. Right. Yeah. And so like, but for real estate agents like that, what Courtney is saying is super valuable. So like, if you are going through and you see um, a post from Courtney that talks about, here's how to really define your social media pillars, like save that into a folder that's called social media pillar ideas or whatever, like start yeah. organizing your content and your ideas so that way you don't have to like think as hard about things. Like you have yeah. the inspiration now just make it yours. And I, uh, that is super underrated advice right there. In my opinion, <laughs> it's so easy because you're already mindlessly scrolling and there's things that you like and you're sharing and saving yeah. and whatever. Anyways, it's like just yeah. organize them. So when you are in that rut of like, I don't know what to make content of, like, I'm so like, you just go back in the folders and you see like, Maybe you have a folder for quote cards and it's like, oh, I'm going to do a video yeah. talking about a quote card that really resonated with me. Like, right. hey, this quote resonated with me because X, Y, Z. Like, it's right. just such a way to filter out like previous thoughts and right. kind of like reintroduce them. And that's why right. a lot of people like TikTok so much is because like, and again, your saves folders, they're, they're private. It's just like TikTok right. where a lot of people yeah. like you're liked folder is private because it's stuff right. that like you're interested in or want to look back at. So yeah. think through when you're looking at content that way as well. Like, okay, maybe like this resonated with me now. I'm sure it will also resonate with me right. in a couple weeks when I need help with content. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's super, super valuable. Um, I have to say that this is probably the fastest podcast that we have gotten through. Like, I feel like we just started. We talked about so <laughs> much stuff. Um, we just like, we started and it just like caught fire. And so, um, Courtney, I feel like you, you, you provided so much valuable insight to everybody and I really appreciate it. I know for me, like there's so many things that I took away. Um, like I really need to define what my content pillars look like because mm -hmm. a lot of times I'm just all over the board. Like I'll post a lot of personal stuff and then a lot of like real estate marketing stuff. And I need to focus in on who do I really want to reach? And I feel like everybody watching this should also be feeling that way. Like, who do I want to reach and how do I need to target them? Like, what do they want to know from me? And I feel like using uh, resources like ChatGPT, like I, I do that all the time, actually. Like, what um, are the biggest questions that v, like a VA buyer would want to know or whatever? And then start mm -hmm. making your content around that. And so um, anyways, thank you though so much for joining. Is there anything that you want to leave the audience with before we wrap this thing up? 
Well, thank you for having me. I feel like it, the time really did fly by. We just broke. It <laughs> <laughs> went so fast. We went so it's fast. <laughs> I, honestly, I think the biggest thing is like you just need to not put so much pressure on yourself about social media. Like a really good example of that is I I test out a lot like absence on social media. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I'm not posting, you know, for two three weeks, and I'm trying to see like, am I still getting DMs? Am I still getting people liking previous posts? Like, are people yeah. still interested in my profile? And then when you repost after those two weeks, like then your post is shown to all these people because the algorithm's kind of like, hey, they haven't posted in a while. Like you should probably see this. And Mm. usually those posts perform so well for me. Like there's just a lot of things that you can test and try out. But I think you you need to really stay true to yourself and and not stack on so much, you know, so much on your plate of like, I can't keep up with this. Like once you really define, okay, I want to be on Instagram and I want to be on Meta and okay, right. what type of content do I want to post? Okay, I want to post content that's about this, that, and the other. Okay, right. I'm going to post this amount of times per week. Test that out for 30, 60, 90 days and see where you're at. Like The right. biggest advice I can give is you know, you're not going to look back and be like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Or like how embarrassing of me you're going to look back and be like, wow, like out of that, I had like two people reach out and I changed their lives or I made a friend from that or I did X, Y, and Z. Like just don't be afraid to be yourself um, and don't put so much pressure on yourself comparing yourself to these people on social media because everything is so vanity driven. And like we mentioned previously, like there are a lot of things that can be bought, like, you know, and even there are filters, there are so many different things, like truly don't focus on that. And you'll have so much more fun creating content and it'll show. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like when people force it, that completely shows and <clears throat> you don't want it to look like that. You don't want it to look like you're, you have to make these videos. You want it to be like you are talking to, to you in real life. Like this is what you would be like, because a lot, like I've been guilty of this so many times. Like there's so many things that I've had to learn the hard way with, with social media. And you, you go from being like a normal person in just everyday life to creating content. And then you become like a news broadcaster and you're just mm-hmm. like, you know, and you start acting like somebody that you're not. And it's a very, it's a very difficult thing to like get past, like talking like you would talk like you and I are right now, or if we're talking in person, like it's very hard to go from that to, um, or talking like that on camera when you're getting ready to make a video and post it on social media. Like everybody, there's a lot of like, here are the five ways to do this and that, like, like what you're saying, just really be you. And I feel like when people see you in real life and they see um, you in real life and the person that they see on camera, you're going to have such a better connection than them being like, hmm, like you talk so much differently in, in real life than you do on Instagram. And uh, but it's it's a challenge sometimes to get past that. It really is. But you, because you start to compare yourself to these people right. or like people that started around the same time as you and like as a human being, it's so hard not to feel like oh my gosh, you know, Janice is doing so much better than me. But I, the second you stop thinking about Janice and think about like the type of content and value you're able to provide, then you'll just be so much better off. And if you get to that point where you feel like, wow, I've really lost myself. I don't really know what type of content I'm making anymore. Then take a break from it and regroup afterwards. Don't feel this pressure of like, I'm just going to, you know, be this machine and keep doing it until I feel better. Like that's not going to help you at all. No. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I know that everybody is going to take away so many little tidbits from this. And so again, Courtney, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Like, I'm so serious. Like this one flew Thank you for by. having me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's just like, I can't believe that we were doing this for over an hour already. But um, yeah, if anybody has any questions for Courtney or myself, like you guys know me, I'm always available and I love to hop on Zooms or do an Instagram live or whatever. And so, um, and I know Courtney is also always willing to just chat with you about things. And so I feel like the best way to learn is by either failing at things and learning it that way, or just talking to people who know what they're talking about, like Courtney does. And so, um, Courtney, thank you again. I appreciate it. Everybody watching or listening to this. I appreciate you as always. Um, and stay tuned for the next one. See ya. Thank you. Bye.